All right, guys, Friday night out in the garage. Thank God it's Friday. We made it to the weekend. I think it's about time to get the uh, new bumpers unboxed. So we've got the box up on a table here, just about ready to start that process. Hopefully they've arrived safely. I was just taking a look at this note from the bumper company. Hopefully FedEx, who shipped this, heated that note. And these, these have arrived uh, unscathed, undented, unscratched. So we will find out shortly once we get this uh, box popped open. Uh, I think it went from Vietnam to Singapore to Memphis to Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, and then to me here. So it's had a bit of a journey, and I'm sure it's been handled by a million different people. So anyway, let's get it unboxed, and we'll see how they made the journey. And there are the fronts. So it says TR4A on them. It'll be the same as the TR5, TR250. And that should be it. So, good job on the packaging so far. All right, let me, uh, let me get cleaned up out here and then we'll put the bumpers up on the table and we'll have a look. All right, let's go ahead and open the uh, overriders first. So let's do the rears. And we'll be careful when we're cutting the plastic off these. Starting to get uh, dark pretty early here. Probably coming up to about seven, seven o'clock, somewhere around there. So far, I'm um, I'm pretty impressed as far as the weight is concerned. Um, it feels pretty good. What I'll do is. Um, I'll eventually compare them to what I think I've got um, an original bumper on the rear of this car. So we'll compare it to the original chrome bumper and overriders. And now I have an aftermarket uh, front bumper, brand new, from I think it's one from one of the big three vendors. It's a chrome bumper. And um, if you watched any of my previous videos when I was mounting that bumper, I wasn't very happy with the uh, the quality of it. It's um, quite ripply even though it's brand new so one thing about these um, stainless steel bumpers and I knew this when I purchased them is that they are black on the inside they're painted black so you'll see here they're painted on the inside <clears throat> I don't have a problem with that probably keep them from rusting anyway they're, they're stainless anyway but so far that looks excellent good and good weight to it as well so, so far, impressed. Now, I'm going to also compare them, of course. <laughs> one, it's one thing to look good, but of course they've got to fit and match up to the originals. So we'll do a com comparison check as well. So yeah, it doesn't really matter what they, well, I'm going to say it does matter what they look like, but it's more important, obviously, that they fit correctly. So that will be... An important part of this whole process is fitting these on the car. And we hope to do that over the next day or two. I'm going to probably need a little bit of help to do that so I don't scratch the car up. So I've got a call out for that. We'll see if the bat call is heated. I'm sure it will be. I've got some work to do. Uh, prior to actually getting these on the car anyway. i got to fit them back onto the actual bumpers themselves before I offer them up to the car. Man, these things are packed quite well, as you can see. He's struggling to get the packaging off. All right. 
There's the other overrider, and of course the light goes in there for the license plate. Those look really good so far. Now what I'm impressed with is the fact that they've sent the hardware, as mentioned. So, okay, so this is not the lights. <laughs> I was getting excited that this was the lights. So this is the trim that actually goes between, so in this piece here, I actually have the factory uh, type pieces for this, but this trim actually goes in here against the bumper when it gets fastened onto the bumper. So that's the trim pieces for that. I'll show you this style versus what the factory looks like. But anyway, so that's the packing pieces basically. Then you have the hardware. So obviously it looks like stainless steel and it's got the chrome domed bumper bolts which are a little different than the factory ones they're wider for sure but all of them are here so that's good to have all brand new ones of those now <laughs> looking at the hardware if I'm gonna be critical let's have a look at the hardware the lock washers are huge way way oversized so bump the uh, wash the fly washer is okay. Look at the size of the lock washer, like crazy big. So if you want to call that a negative, you can, but easily correctable. <clears throat> All right, let me pack these back up, this hardware back up, and then we'll open the front overriders. Be right back. All right, onto the front overriders, and I won't be using these for my car anyway, but. I'm going to open them anyway, make sure that they're not damaged. Um, these I could potentially use on my TR4 restoration project. Um, I'm assuming that the TR4 overriders are the same as the uh, 4A overriders. I know the positioning is different on the bumpers, but I think the overriders themselves are the same. Could be wrong. I'm not going to get to my TR4 project for a few years, so we won't find out for a while. So I do have that brand new chrome bumper that I can actually use for the uh, TR4 when we get to that point. I'm not sure what the what the uh, polished stainless will look like against the chrome. Again those look really good. Again black on the back but they look good. Nice and heavy again. The edges are a little sharp. You know you can see that. You know, there's a little, I'm just, you know, try not to be overly critical here, but, you know, there's a little grinding error there on that edge, and it is a little sharp. But again, that's what those packing pieces go in there. You'll never even see that. All right, there's one. Sorry, I'm kind of doing this off camera, I know, but I kind of got to pick it up to get a good purchase on it to be able to unwrap it. So. I'm doing the best I can. All right, number two. Looks good, no dents again. look good and again good weight so so far so good let's um, let's do a comparison of those versus the I've only got the rear overriders handy so let me uh, bring the stock rear overriders up and we'll have a look at those versus the reproductions all right here's a look of the uh, stock chrome overrider And you can see she's <clears throat> a little bit rusty inside. A little dented, obviously very pitted. So from a shape perspective, they're pretty darn close. I would say that the stock one fits a little flatter on the table. It doesn't have much uh, wobble in it versus the aftermarket one. 
the uh, stainless one is definitely less flat I would say on the bottom than what the stock is so you can see that the footprint is a little bit wider on the stock than the Vietnamese one it's got a little bit of a kick out this is more of a straight edge on this one versus more of a little bit of a an angle so it's got a you know a, to a higher top end if you can see that in the camera but uh, size wise pretty darn close I would say that the stock bumper probably sits a little bit deeper as far as the plate is concerned here on the inside this looks like it sits a little deeper than what this one does again we'll have to see how these fit on the car those are just perceptions that I'm getting from a first quick look at these so anyway uh, as far as sizing is concerned they're pretty darn close it'll be interesting to see how the light fixture fits in I uh, don't know if these are little on the stock ones these are little um, little tabs for the screws to fit in for the lights so I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to transfer these across or whether I can just actually screw in directly to the uh, actually it looks like I can screw in directly because on the stock ones these have little pockets in them you can see they have little cutouts on the new ones they're actually just no pockets they're actually just straight in so I should be able just to screw if as long as that light fits there we should be able to just to screw that in there okay enough on the overriders there's your comparison for those let's get to unwrapping the bumpers themselves oh, one more other thing I should just mention the stock overriders are definitely heavier than the uh, Vietnamese reproduction so just wanted to point that out these do not feel flimsy in any way um, but they're definitely not as heavy as the uh, stock originals alright we'll unwrap the rear bumper first okay so not only are they this uh, sort of silk lined they're also bubble wrapped on the inside as well I don't know if you can see that so pretty well wrapped Right, I'm not going to bore you by spending a half an hour to unwrap this, so we'll come back when it's unwrapped. All right, guys, rear bumper is unwrapped. First impression, it looks good. I don't see any dents or any problems or scratches. But again, we'll uh, see this in a little bit better light tomorrow. We'll make another observation at that point. They do have the square holes in the bumpers for those chrome head bolts, the domed head bolts. Here is the original bumper next to it. Looks like all the holes are in relatively the same location, so that's a good thing. Again, painted black on the interiors. So, again, we'll see how it fits when we get to that point, hopefully in the next day or two. But there's a comparison of the new versus old. Again, uh, significant or fairly significant difference in weight. So much uh, heavier original bumper. Uh, lighter obviously with the uh, stainless Vietnamese bumper, but I think it will suffice So again, I think all the reproductions on the market today unless you have your originals chrome That's probably the best Scenarios to get your originals chromed if they are in good condition. Unfortunately, this bumper has seen Better days. It's got a few bits of rust. It's got some dents here and there. This one is dead center It's actually bent here on the bottom now. I know a good chrome shop can hammer these out so it is rescuable but let's have a little bit more of a discussion point when we get to what these bumpers actually cost me versus what the cost of rechroming would be. We'll hit that at the end of the video. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll open the uh, front bumper next. And we'll do a comparison to the one I have on the floor, which is an aftermarket but chromed bumper from one of the big three parts vendors. All right, a quick overview of the front bumper, the stainless in front here and the chrome reproduction in the rear 
So again, the uh, stainless steel made it without any scratches or dents from what I can see. And it looks good. Maybe a little bit of a wave here. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe a little bit of a wave in the stainless there. But not too bad. You can probably just see it there. I think you can see it. I can see it in the camera. But other than that, it looks pretty good the whole way along. Now compared to, and this is a little bit dirty, but uh, compared to the chrome bumper, which is new, you can see it's pretty rough here along the top edges. It's quite wavy here. Again, I don't know whether the camera will pick this up, but there's quite wavy along this top edge. And the chrome is not very good in certain places like here, for example. There's a kind of a stick out here kind of a ripple here, more stick outs here on the chrome, another stick out here on the chrome. So as far as weight is concerned, again the uh, chrome bumper is a little heavier. This one actually had a scratch in it as well. So uh, anyway, I'd say from a condition perspective, the uh, if you can see it this way, if that works any better, as far as the waves in the chrome one. versus the stainless in the front. Again, the chrome has uh, obviously the finish back on it, whereas the stainless steel has the black back. Again, that doesn't bother me. It may bother you. So anyway, there's a comparison of the front bumpers. Let's talk a little bit more about the specifics. All right, probably a good time to have a discussion on uh, stainless steel Vietnamese bumpers versus reproduction bumpers chrome bumpers versus getting your originals chromed and so repaired. As I recall from an expense perspective when I had my front and rear bumpers chromed on my 1973 Triumph TR6 locally this was 14 years ago so I'm a little bit out of date as far as pricing is concerned but for the front and rear bumpers to be rechromed on my TR6 it cost $1600 Canadian 14 years ago so that was a pretty pricey proposition back in, back then it's actually a fairly pricey proposition now a days even uh, $1600 is a fair chunk of change going into the tail end of your restoration obviously it's an important piece for your car and you want it to look good but again $1600 uh, maybe not everybody has that in the budget so one of the other options is to go with an aftermarket chrome bumper and this is not an inexpensive proposition either and the quality as demonstrated here on the table is not great I think one of the main uh, big three vendors even mentions that uh, on their website and in their catalog that the quality of these, of these bumpers is not really up to par now these bumpers are not cheap either um, if you look at some of the uh, websites out there, I believe the bumper, and I'm going to quote the rear bumper pricing, so the rear bumper pricing for a new chrome reproduction rear bumper is around the $700 US mark. That is just for the bumper. The overriders, I believe the overriders run about $85, somewhere around $80 to $85 a piece. So you're looking at about $160 just again for the overrider. So you're looking at about $865. $870 just for one reproduction chrome bumper. Alright, let's talk a little bit about why I decided to go with the uh, stainless steel bumpers from Vietnam. Now, as mentioned, uh, I'm aware of two companies that uh, sell bumpers out of Vietnam. The one's named Harrington Group. Uh, you can Google them if you just put Harrington Group and Triumph in there. I'm sure you'll be able to pull up their website. I purchased these again from a company called Bumper Automobile and their website is bumperautomobile.com. As mentioned, they may not have the particular bumper listed for your car, but if you give them a call, I'm sure they will tell you that they have, for example, the TR4A 250 and TR5 bumpers are not listed there on their website. However, obviously they are available, so give them a call if you're looking for something So specific. if you are able to deal with having the black backs on the bumper, these might be an option for you. Again, they are polished stainless steel. They should not rust. Obviously the chrome rusts and pits over time. So hopefully the stainless steel will have a fairly good and long life. Again, it's not like these, seat, these cars are daily drivers anymore and they uh, rarely see inclement weather. So I'm hoping these bumpers will last a fairly long time. So I mentioned time. the pricing on uh, either getting a bumper re-chromed, an original bumper re-chromed, or purchasing an aftermarket 
chrome bumper. It's a fairly expensive proposition and I'm going to tell you why in comparison to the stainless steel bumpers. So the real benefit of these stainless steel bumpers is the cost. If you're looking for a few dollars to put into other areas of the car or you don't want to spend a ton of cash on getting your original bumpers re-chromed, then this might be an option for you. So I'm going to give you the total cost breakdown of these bumpers in both US and Canadian funds. So for the front and rear bumpers combined along with both sets of overriders and the hardware, it came out to $480 US. That is for the complete set. So $480. Now, as far as the shipping charge is concerned, it was $890 US and that is for FedEx to ship them from Vietnam to my front door. There was also a $35 US PayPal fee, so that works out to be $705 US dollars total. So converted to Canadian funds, that $705 US turns out to be $930 Canadian. Now I do have a bit of an additional charge to add as I have to pay sales tax on these bumpers once they arrive at my door. So I've paid an additional $120 Canadian in taxes. So the total Canadian price for the front and rear bumpers along with the overriders and hardware is a thousand and fifty dollars now from a wait time perspective uh, I know that when I had my bumpers chrome for my TR6 like I mentioned it could be a very long process depending on the time of year you're trying to get things chromed there may be things a lot of projects in front of you so uh, I think for the TR6 I waited three months to have my bumpers chromed the stainless steel bumpers from Vietnam were actually quite quickly shipped to me I ordered them on August the 31st and they arrived at my door on September the 16th. All right guys, I think we'll put an end to this video. We'll call this part one, uh, just an overview of the stainless steel bumpers from Vietnam and a comparison to the stock chrome bumpers and the aftermarket chrome bumpers. Hopefully that was a little bit educational for you. Part two will be fitting these to the car and we will see if we have any fitting issues when we go to install these. So hopefully we don't but we won't know until we actually try, so that will be part two, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for commenting, and thanks for subscribing. We'll see you tomorrow.